In this video, I will present the epsilon delta definition of a limit. Intuitively, when we write the expression of x tends towards c for f of x is equal to l, what we're saying is that as x approaches the value of c, the function f of x will approach the value of l. What I want to do is to present a precise and ambiguous definition that captures this idea. And first of all, before we begin, I'm going to assume that the function f of x is well defined within a certain open interval around c. So around the point c over here, I'm assuming that the function is well defined in the region around c. So the function itself does not have to be defined at the point c, but the function must be defined in the region around c. And now I will state the definition and then explain it. So what we mean when we say the limit as x tends towards c for f of x is equal to l, this statement is completely equivalent to the following statement. So the statement that I'm about to provide is the epsilon delta definition. So the statement goes, for every value of epsilon that we choose that is larger than zero, so we choose some value of epsilon, there will exist, so there exists some value delta that is also larger than zero, such that, such that for all values of x, such that for all values of x, if your value of x lies within a distance of delta away from the point c, then this immediately implies that the corresponding f of, f of x will lie at a distance of epsilon away from the limit l. So this entire statement is the epsilon delta definition. So you can kind of view this as a short, uh, you can kind of view this statement here as a shorthand for this longer statement. So whenever we say that uh, the limit of f of x as x tends towards c is equal to l, what we're saying is that uh, this statement here is true, this statement is satisfied. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to focus on what this definition actually means. So we'll take a closer look at this definition. So first we'll take a look at this lower block over here. So I'm going to divide this definition into two blocks and now we'll first focus on this lower block that I just boxed. So you can see that within this block you can see we have an if and then statement over here. This is what we call a conditional statement and so it's saying that if this first condition is satisfied then this second statement is immediately true. So now I'll now proceed to explain what these two statements actually mean. So the first statement states that x is a point that lies within a distance of delta away from the point c. So we can visualize this by drawing an axis. So let's say this point here is c, and then this point here is c plus delta, and then this point here is c minus delta. Your value of x would lie somewhere within this shaded region. And so note that this shaded region does not include the point c itself because this term here is strictly larger than zero, so x cannot be equal to c, so it does not equal to, it does, uh, the shaded region does not include the point c as well. So this is actually the reason why functions that are not defined at the point c can still have a limit at c, because the limit does not concern itself with the point c. And so what we have now is we have a point x that lies within this shaded region, so let's say x is some point over here, and then for this value of x, it will be mapped to a corresponding value f of x by the function. And then what this conditional statement is saying is that for this value of f of x, since x is within a distance of delta away from c, so since this first criterion is satisfied, then we know that this value f of x must be at a distance of epsilon away from the value of l. So once again, you can represent this using the using line. So let's say this is L, this is L plus epsilon, this is L minus epsilon. Then your function f of x must lie somewhere within this shaded region. So it's somewhere within the distance of epsilon away from L. And so this is what the second statement is saying. And now let's take a look at this statement, for all values of x. So what this means is that this statement must be true for all values of x. So for all values of x for which the first statement is true, which actually just corresponds to all values within this shaded region, then for all the values of x within this shaded region, their corresponding values, f of x, must always lie within a distance of epsilon from the limit.
So to visualize what I've just explained in the previous discussion, we can take a look at this diagram that I've drawn over here. So this is a way to visualize what I've just explained. So what I just explained mainly just focused on this lower block over here, what it actually means. And what it means is that for all values of x, which lie within the confines of delta, so within this shader region, for all these values of x within the shader region, they will all be mapped to corresponding values of f of x. And for all those values of f of x, they will all lie within uh, the confines of epsilon. So they will all be within a distance of epsilon away from the value of L, the value of the limit. So this is a graphical way to understand this lower block. So now that we understand what this lower block means, we can now take a look at this upper block. So this part states that a limit exists only if no matter what values of epsilon that we choose, there will always be a corresponding value of delta such that this lower block is true. So no matter how small I choose epsilon to be, I can always find a value of delta such that for all values of x's that lie within a value of delta away from c, they will all be mapped to outputs that lie within a distance of epsilon away from the limit. So of course I can always choose huge values of epsilon, so I can choose epsilon to be a value of several thousand, and in which case finding a delta is always easy. But the trick is that for functions where limits exist at point c, even if you choose extremely tiny values of epsilon, the lower block will, so this lower block over here, will always be true. So there will always be a corresponding value of delta such that this lower block is true. And so this is the epsilon delta definition of a limit. And in coming videos, I will try to show how we can apply this definition.